Hi everybody and welcome to my Unruly Housewife channel. I've got a bit of a croaky throat today so goodness knows what I'm going to sound like. Anyway, today I am showing you how to do this which is Makume Gane, I think that's how you pronounce it. And it's a Japanese decorative technique and I've made some just some thin veneers and you can apply these to cabochons, book covers, boxes, whatever you like. Um, they're very very pretty. Originally uh, in the 17th century Japanese sword makers would use coloured metals in layers to produce these patterns for um, hilts and, and uh, scabbards I don't know <laughs> bits of swords but um, like everything else you know once the polymer clayers get their hands on it it becomes something completely different. And I'm back. For this technique you will need um, four colours rolled out on your thickest setting on your pasta machine or if you don't have a pasta machine you can use four thicknesses of cereal packet either side and rest your rolling pin on those and that will give you a good approximation. Later on we'll be using some thinner settings and really you're going to have to kind of mess around with these and make, make up a thickness for those but it's not uh, written in stone. This is quite a fluid amazing technique. So let's just take this away. We'll use that later for a backing. Once you've got your four colours, do make sure that some are dark, some are light, you know, make them interesting and different. Once you've got them, you can arrange them how you want them. And this really is up to you. So I think I'm going to do it like that, like that. Maybe I'll put that there, like that. OK, so I'm going to have those four colours in that way, but I want to make them thinner. Now, I don't want to bust my uh, my machine, so I'm going to put them through two at a time. And remember they were on zero and now I'm going to put them through on number two. Probably should do one first, but I'm a rebel. Okay, those are through on number two and now I'm going to do the other colours. I didn't want to do all four together. I said I'm a rebel, I'm not an idiot. <laughs> I want to break my atlas, my atlas machine. Okay, so here are our uh, colours and now we can put them together into the, the four. And I've tried to make them so that um, I've got some light and dark next to each other and stuff like that, you know. Once we have them rolled out, we can then divide the colours up. Excuse my hand. I think I'm going to divide this into three or four, looking at it. I think perhaps three. And then I'm going to stack them. And I'm just going to stack them as they come, I think. Oh, start to croak. So I've stacked them like that, and um, I'm going to trim off the edges. Oops! It's always good to use the bladed side of the knife if you're going to trim something. <laughs> Okay, so here is our new um, stack. So let's take our stack and just roll it out a little. Because they are a tiny bit thick, those lines. The thing about this is it really, you do really do make it up as you go along, so. Okay, now we've got this far. We are going to start to um, treat our clay in a way that's going to make the pattern. So basically what we're going to do is we're just going to, it looks mad if you haven't done this before, we're going to poke the clay randomly with lots of little objects. We're going to cut it and I think I'm going to cut it in curves. I'm not going to cut it all the way through. It's good to use the blunt side of something, but I'm because I like this curved blade, I'm just going to wiggle it about a bit. Whoops. Try not to remove it too far from what you're doing. Um, we are going to maybe do a wiggly one there. Oh, you see, look, don't do that. Okay, let's put it back. Um, what else can we do? I think I've got a round cutter and I'm going to try and I'm going to use the, there's not really a blunt side of this, but actually there is, there's that. So I'm going to use that and not push it all the way through. 
just quite a long way down. Pressing on the sharp side, of course, <laughs> is a very interesting effect on your hand. But uh, there you go. So we have plenty of those because they look good. Try not to worry too much about what's happening to your shape. It's going to be fine. Um, we'll have a lot more thin holes going through, I think. Just give them a little wiggle. I told you this was random, didn't I? Uh, although, of course, <laughs> my, my ability to randomise is a little bit stunted. It's something to do with how I grew up. <laughs> so, uh, yep, we've done that. Let's do some more. Let me see. Maybe I could use a uh, ruler. No, that's not going to carve, is it? I'm going to use this interesting shape here to um, add to my patterns. Okay, so I quite like that because it sort of curves around the curves. Now, if you've never done this, you're probably thinking now, wow, she's really messed that up. But believe me, you're going to be a fan. I swear. All right, so let's just release this from the... Uh... <laughs> Look at that, it looks so stupid, doesn't it? <laughs> we released it from there. I'd like to get a different circle on here, actually. Or maybe what we could do is to cross over some of these circles so that they look a bit less regimented. This is kind of weird, but it really suits me, this technique. <laughs> It suits my nature because it's a bit mad, but it comes out all right in the end. Ow! <laughs> it really is weird pressing the sharp bit. What can I do? Ah, oh, I'll man up. Woman up, in fact. Okay. That's my... Uh... One more. All right, look, I'm done. Okay, so we release this from the tile. We look upon it in despair, and weep, and then I start to press the sides in because I don't want holes where all these holes are. I want it to be a solid block. And so I'll press and pinch and press until we start to come back to our solid block. If I zip the film on a bit, you'll know why. Pressing and pinching. to make this little block. And believe me, it's all going to have a happy ending. So now we've ended up with this square block. And when we cut it, we're not going to cut it down the stripes like that, which is what you might think if you were um, sane. <laughs> What we are going to do is we're going to cut it down this way. Now, I would um, urge you, if you are going to do this, to freeze that. Not freeze it, but put it in the fridge for a while and let it cool right off before you start cutting. However, I'm not, I don't have that luxury today, so I'm going to just give it a go and see what we can get out of it. So we're flying by the seat of our pants here, and I hope you can see what I'm doing. Always a worry. I'll try and do it like this, but it's going to be a bit weird. And if I cut down there like that, you will see we've got an amazing pattern there. I'm going to just turn it sideways because I don't want them to all get squashed down because it's warm. As I say, that was why I would call it off. 
and as we cut down you can see that we are finding some amazing patterns. Oops. And it's just such an interesting technique. And always cutting you know, with the stripes and not against them. And we did this very quickly and I sort of have quite a big area here but we can think about that later. Probably not cutting it straight enough. Now you can cut this very very thin if you want and have almost wispy little fragments of it. I've been quite sort of slabby the way that I've done this but, but that's because I'm doing it at a ridiculously hard angle but you can cut little fragmenty bits like that if you want and then piece them together which gives you a maybe a more subtle pattern so this is uh, the pattern that we've made I think it might be a little bit plain in places but it's done pretty well so let me stop talking it down now this is something I've put through on number two on my pasta machine and what I'm going to do now is to lay these pieces onto it now <clears throat> As you saw, I was cutting some very different thicknesses there. So it would be better if you were going to do this to make sure that you are um, either cutting thin ones or thick ones. I'm going to sort of mix them up. Thin ones, as I say, are probably easier to blend together than the thick ones, which tend to lay just side by side and you can sort of see the seams more. I'm just going to That's a really nice one actually, so I don't want to give it up and put that through there, like that. Now you'll take much more time to do this than me, I'm sure, because you'll make a better job. And what I've done here is I've been rather crazy because these are all different thicknesses. Now if you do notice a very thick bit sticking up, I guess you could always shave it off, couldn't you? That might give you a really interesting pattern. It's such a brilliantly fluid technique. And then taking your um, roller, you can now roll these so that you blend them together into um, the final pattern. Don't drop something gold on them. It was <laughs> gold paper. What is that about? I don't even have gold paper in my studio. Okay, so uh, you can roll this out. And you will choose when you're going to make, if you're going to make cabochons and things, you'll be able to choose which pieces of pattern you want to use. So if I roll it out by hand, I get this, and I'm going to just cut it down the middle so I can show you something else. If I roll it out by hand, I would get something like this, and that's not too, I've not made that too thin. Now if I wanted to do this, what I could do with this piece is to put it through my pasta machine on like number three or something, quite a bit thinner to make a veneer and because I've done that I've got an entirely different sort of pattern there which is quite unusual and it really has divided up into the squares so and that's um, a nice bendy veneer I wonder what would happen if we did it on number four And that's if you put it through, I don't know if you can see this, that's if you put it through on number four. So that's unusual. I like this small pattern here. And um, you can cut that out, uh, cut out some shapes to use, or you can make that a little bit thinner. It just really is a lot of trial and error. So there's the one that we've just made. Oops. Here are the ones I made earlier. I sliced these a lot thinner and I think it blended the patterns in. <laughs> Sorry about that noise. I sliced these a lot thinner and I think it blended the patterns in together a bit, a bit more nicely than we have there. But um, that's how you do it. 
If you enjoyed this video, do give me a big thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already to my channel, you might like to subscribe. If uh, you have any questions or comments, do leave them down below. There's bound to be something I haven't said. And um, yeah, thank you for sticking around. I love you all. Bye bye.